Okay, I wanna take you through the inventory in our minimalist home, so let's jump right in. Dish towels, we have six. Uh, six for like everyday use and then two decorative about six dish cloths And then I have one winter coat that I wear for all purposes One puffy vest one purse one pair of dress shoes one baseball style hat one winter style hat again This is descriptive not prescriptive. So this is what works for me. Okay, then let's talk about pots and pans So I have this one a bigger pot it has a glass lid one big frying pan we have this smaller one that's perfect for just frying a couple of eggs and then i have one more pot i think it's let me grab out of the dishwasher oh it's kind of hot uh and then this pot with a strainer lid these are our everyday go-to's for pots and pans i do have a larger stock pot in the basement and then i also have a dutch oven that i store down here and so i'm going to keep going around telling you how many of each thing we have in our entire house but even more importantly how i arrived at these numbers As far as pot holders, I have two of the glove style and two, oh, that is so dirty. <laughs> we have a baker in our family now. I'm very glad for it, but man, can she get things dirty. Uh, we have two of these and probably most fascinating to people is uh, the number of dishes we have. Okay, so we have one place setting per person. We have six people in our house, so a plate and bowl, and then two extras if we would have company. And so there's eight place settings. And then we also have six kind of regular style glasses. And then Tom uh, really likes drinking from mason jars because you can fit more in it. So we have two of these out as well. And then for coffee mugs, we have six of these. Again, it matches the number in our household plus two extras. Again, these ones hold a little bit more if you wanna make some like a latte or something a little bit fancier. And then we have one water bottle per person and then four travel coffee mugs, so two for each of the adults in the house. Uh, let's go through the utensils real quick and then the bathroom and then I'll tell you how I arrived at these numbers. Okay, so if I haven't lost you already, this is where I really start to lose balls with our utensils or lack of utensils. One pancake flipper, one of these guys, a ladle, one salad tongs, spatulas. That's the big one, right? For the longest time, we only had one spatula. Now we've actually upgraded to two. So one's in the dishwasher. Again, Adeline does a lot of baking now. And so she was like, could we have another spatula? And I'm like, that's totally fine. Prior to that, I was fine with just one. Like it was literally all that I needed. Knives, I'm not sure I should flash around knives. We have like one chopping knife, one that's more for like bread or that kind of thing. And then a couple smaller paring knives. You know, we have like one of these lemon squeezy things, one garlic press, one of these, a meat pounder thing, and this, and I can do everything in my kitchen. But I'm not a fancy cook. Like the, the season of cooking that we're in right now is very minimal survival. It's not fancy. I make the same things over and over again. I don't apologize for it. And so my kitchen right now is serving the season that we're in and I love it because it makes it really easy to clean and uh, super easy to put stuff away. We also have, I've shown you my magnetic uh, measuring spoons, one set of measuring spoons, one set of measuring cups, and then one liquid measuring cup. I've also really minimized our bakeware. I have a Bundt cake pan, of course. You can still buy our Easy Awesome Bundt Cake Recipes recipe book. And then I also have a printable uh, with minimalism by the numbers, if that's helpful for you to see it laid out, to have checklists. And so I'll share more details about that coming up as well. Um, but I have a really pared down baking dishes. And then down under the stove, I have these types of dishes. We have four that are kind of the size or various sizes. And so we actually use these kind of a lot, but the other stuff I don't use. And so I don't need to keep a lot of them. And then for cutting boards, we have two, one, one smaller plastic one that's really convenient to pull out and then a bigger wood one that's a little bit more pain <laughs> to pull out. Okay, so uh, here in the bathroom, we have six uh, regular size bath towels. Again, because there's six people in our household, I don't have any for guests. So I've decided that any towels that are good enough for a guest, like we should also have just as nice of towels. So we're just as worthy <laughs> of having a nice bath towels. And then each bathroom has two hand towels. Total, we have but six washcloths. We have 372 Q-tips. Oh wait, now we only have 372 Q-tips. Are you only using one today or? It all depends what I find, Don. <laughs> oh no, that's gross. <laughs> And so obviously there's some things that I don't count and I haven't thought about Q-tips uh, being one of them, but there has been quite a bit of thought and strategy put into how many numbers of each thing that I want to manage in our house. So let's go talk about that for a minute. Okay, so how did we decide 
how many of each thing that we would have. And I went by either count or container. So when it comes to like bath towels, it just made sense to me to have one bath towel per person. And that has worked very well over the last eight years since we highly simplified our home. Now there are some other things like dish towels where I, I didn't know how to put a number around it. And so what I decided to go by was container. So I looked at the drawer where we keep our dish towels and I said, how many comfortably fit in here? And it turns out that you can stack them about two tall, fit two wide, three deep. And so <laughs> with my all of my towels here, I could easily, easily fit about six regular dish towels and then two of these decorative ones and then one stack of these like microfiber dish cloths right there, right? And so I went by container. That is what comfortably fit in the drawer. And so that's how many that we have. In the next drawer is as many plastic bags as fits in that drawer. The next drawer has microfiber cloths. Again, no specific number with those. And the bottom drawer houses as many paper bags as comfortably fits in there. I also use that same logic for like food storage containers, dedicated one shelf in our cabinet for food storage containers. Uh, as you know, we, we store them with the lid on. If you haven't tried that, you should try that. It it's life changing, right? And so I just keep the number that comfortably fits on that shelf, knowing that most of us have way more food storage containers that we need. What I've learned about myself, again, when I'm trying to decide the inventory for our, our home is that Every single item is inventory that we have to manage. And for most of us as women, we are the, the lead, the chief inventory manager in our house. And so that means that literally every single item of stuff that is in your house is stuff that you have to manage and take care of and put away and clean. Remember that you have it, use it, right? If you don't use it, you're wasting money and then we feel guilty about it. So every single item in my home is inventory that I have to manage. And what I know about myself as a naturally messy person, I prefer creative, right? But as a naturally messy person is that when the inventory creeps up and when life gets a little chaotic, that is the recipe for our house to be a disaster again. But by having low inventory, even when life ramps up and it gets a little wild, I can still manage our home because I have been so intentional about the amount of inventory that we have in here. So I've said this before and I will say it again. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not lazy. You're not unmotivated. You're not a bad housekeeper. You're not a bad mom. You're not a bad wife. You are just trying to manage way too much inventory. And here is what has really blown my mind. And we're going to go through, I'll take you through some more inventory in our house. Here is what is mind blowing to me is how little inventory I can actually manage in our house. I wouldn't have ever thought that we'd only have six glasses and one place setting per person and one towel. I would have thought I'm a fairly competent person, right? I could manage much more than that, right? And the truth is, I can't. If I want our house to stay neat and tidy and feel like a peaceful place to be, uh, have it be where it's really easy for the kids to pitch in and help, have them feel peaceful in our home and creative and, and not always agitated, it, it, it's very low inventory. And again, that's just me, but that's the beauty of this is that you get to match the inventory in your house to your current season of life. And so you get to decide what is best for you. I just wanna encourage you that it might be a lot lower <laughs> than what you're initially thinking, but don't worry about that because you get to this point and it's so awesome. You don't miss any of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Now I've been doing this for eight years. So I've built up my decluttering muscles. It's, it's, it is fairly easy for me, but don't worry. It really does get a lot easier and the benefits are just too good to pass up. Okay, so for bedding and linens, everyone has one comforter, is that what you call it? Like bedspread <laughs> for their beds. And then we have, uh, Tom and I each have like one throw per person. The kids each have like two throw blankets because they've gotten them for gifts or various things and it's it's totally fine. Probably one area I go a little more overboard on are throw pillows. Even though we try to maintain like a minimalist home, I still want our home to feel cozy and inviting and warm. And so I feel like throw pillows 
pillows help accomplish that and I'm okay managing a little more inventory in that area and I know sometimes people will be like well what about an emergency if you lost power or something like that we do have extra bedding in our campers and so we could always pull stuff in from there but with the extra throw blankets it's not something that we're generally concerned about and then as far as sheets each bed in our house has one set of sheets and then we have one extra queen set and one extra twin set and I know again the question comes up but like well, what if you have like this great sickness go through your house I like to launder everything right away if that were to happen and so if someone has to sleep on a bath towel or a throw blanket or something like that until their sheets go through the laundry it's just it really is not a big deal and so that has worked very really well for me again because I'm trying to manage as little inventory as possible what I have learned is that time and life flies by <laughs> and so uh, I hear from those of you who are further down the path in life that it just keeps going faster right time just keeps going faster and not the opposite way we think like oh when the kids are older they moved out or I retire I'm gonna have all of this time on my hands and then I'm gonna use all of this stuff that I've acquired and the truth is is that it just never comes for most of us by and large and so I'm gonna keep my inventory low now travel light and free up the extra bandwidth and energy and stress <laughs> that comes from trying to manage too much stuff. And actually let's talk about clothes real quick before we leave this room because just uh, recently earlier this year I laid out my full wardrobe on our bed as well and I have five dress tops, five pairs of nice pants, and then five around the house tops, um, a couple pairs of leggings that I wear around the house. I have a very limited wardrobe but again uh, most of us are actually already minimalist when it comes to our clothing. 